Good morning. Welcome to the Bar and Sunday Morning Services. Thank you so much for being with me. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. You can get involved by calling 1-800-411-2663, 1-800-411-BOND, or email me, church at bondinfo.org, church at bondinfo.org, and uh, put your name in town. Name in town on your emails. I appreciate it. It's funny, James, I mean, the, the, uh, the director in the back over there or in the front is supposed to hold up the sign. <laughs> And every time I mention the number, he'll look over at the number. <laughs> or when I mention the, uh, <laughs> I mention the email address, he'll look over at the email. <laughs> Isn't that funny? What are you thinking? <laughs> I'm thinking that if I look over at it, then uh, you'll, uh, you won't say radio or something like that. Oh. Like, because you might try to be looking at that. If I right. look at that, then maybe it'll make you look at it. So instead of holding the sign up, <laughs> if I, and I'm looking at the camera, right? Uh -huh. You figure if you look over there, I won't say I won't say the wrong thing. <laughs> uh, man, how your mind can make you well. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Very smart, man. Thanks. <laughs> did, it, did, it, did God tell you that? I don't know. Did God say look over at the sign? <laughs> Uh, I want to read this to you out of First Corinthians, uh, twelve. I mean, chapter two, uh, verse fourteen to sixteen. Everybody brought the Bible, right? Oh, good. Wow. It says, "But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him; neither can he know them." because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. For who has known the mind of God, of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. And, and the reason I want to talk about that, because I realize that there are two Christianities in America. Have you noticed that? Yes. There are two Christians. Christian, Christianities in America. And I'm wondering, how do you discern which, is, which group is right and which is wrong, all right? And because a lot of folks are fighting battles and saying things, and then they say, well, I'm a Christian, and I'm doing this in the name of God. And as soon as they, as they say that they're a Christian, there's a tendency to want to back down because they said that they're a Christian. And then there are those who say that they're Christians. And they are on the other side of the issue. And they say that they are Christians too. And so I'm wondering, how would the person that, how do we know who really are Christians? You know, How do we know which group of Christians we want to join and be a part of? And I want to use this, uh, this, um, this thing with uh, Trayvon Martin and Joyce Zimmerman as an example, because it's happening now. And I'm not making a decision about uh, George or Trayvon, who was right or who was wrong. I believe that we just should get all the information out there, and, and that would determine who was right and who was wrong. But I'm looking at these people who are uh, clearly on the side of uh, Trayvon, and I'm listening to some of the things that they are saying, and the first thing that they say is that they are Christians. They said, we are Christians, and I believe in God, and I got to stand up for this. And they are trying to get a, a and I have some little notes I've made to myself so I can remind you. Of. They're trying to get um, what they call a social justice movement going. They want to somehow or another create a social, social justice movement. I don't quite know what that is. Anybody know what that is? <clears throat> None of you... You heard of it before, right? Yes. So I don't quite know what, what they mean when they, yes. I think it means, um, as opposed to a spiritual, I just know it's like a social program, you know. That's how I see it. You think it's a social program? Uh, yeah, so it's I not do. a spiritual solution, you know, like an understanding. It's, um, so they want a social justice movement going. Yeah, like a progressive movement. Oh, okay. You know, 
when we reach the the poor and Jackson, some stuff like that. Oh, okay. Maybe if somebody gets shot and they feel it falls in that category, they'll defend them. All right. Whatever. Because <laughs> I, I don't quite understand. You know exactly what they want? Well, no, not really, but social justice is being used by the left. You know, like the Occupy Wall Street movement and, 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 and all these folks, the liberals are talking about social justice. Oh, okay. All right. I know. What, what, you know exactly what it is? I, I'm pretty sure I know exactly what it is. What it is? What is it? They are trying to override the um, justice system that's in place with mob rule. So oh, okay. if, if the mob says different, then the courts have to go with whatever the mob wants. Oh, that's a good point. Yes. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Close yes. to what it is. They're trying to circumvent the due <coughs> but I process. Do, I do notice that they, uh, they keep comparing it to Martin Luther King Jr.'s civil right, rights movement. But it doesn't quite work for them. And so they, I think that's why they came up with the name social justice. And uh, this week, they, uh, they wore these hoodie things uh, to get the little thing going. And they asked people to put the hoodie things on. And it was amazing to me to see that aspect of, did anybody here wear the hoodies? No. Don't be ashamed no. if you wore the hoodies. No. <laughs> uh, uh, why, why didn't you wear the hoodies? Because it didn't make sense to me. All the oh. facts are not out about the case. Right. So I'm just waiting to hear all the facts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the problem is, I, I had a hoodie that I wear sometimes. It's a little, <laughs> jacket you wear it when you work out, you know, you, when you don't want to put on a heavy jacket. And it just have a little hoodie, hoodie on it. And now I won't even wear it. <laughs> because I don't want to be identified with this group of people, yeah. the social justice movement. Oh. I don't want to be identified with them. Yes. I see here that social justice, it has to do with creating a society or that has, it's based on principles of equality and solidarity. So oh. that's why they're wearing the hoodies, because- For the solidarity. Solidarity, yeah. But they, they look, to me, and I'm not, I'm not speaking, I, I want disagreement with you. Disagree. To me, they look dumb in the hoodies. Well, yeah. I really, I look at them and I almost think, don't you, can't you see that we see that you look stupid in the hoodies? Don't wear the hoodies, but <laughs> yes. Yeah, they do look like gangbangers. All right. But that's what it makes them look like gangbangers and things like that. But they wear the hoodies, and I think it's crazy, but it's the mindset. Because human, human, the nature of man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. So, and I know, you know, I know what that thinking is, because prior to God changing my mind, I would be wearing a hoodie too. I wear it to church and everywhere. Yeah, but because I was blind and could see, I was operating on uh, the nature of man instead of the spiritual discernment of God. And that's what anger does, it keeps you in that bowl. Yes? You know, the point of having everybody wear the hoodies is to make the hoodie seem like a, a, another fashion statement instead of instead the of type that. of clothing you wear when you're trying to hide your identity when you're doing crimes. Right. Yeah. Right. That's it. But it's all evil and it doesn't work. And we've seen this happen before. We saw it in the uh, Gina Six situation down in Louisiana. Remember that? When the six boys at some high school got in trouble, black boys, and something happened. They found a, a, a rope hanging on a tree at the school. And remember, everybody and their mama went down there, the same group of people went down there, and they hoop and holler, and then they realized that nothing was going to become of that. And so they ended up going back right into their rat holes and their roaches, roach holes, and nothing came of that. They collected a lot of money left. We saw it with the uh, Duke Lacrosse situation, where a black woman, a stripper, out of wet, my mother accused white boys of raping her and stuff and found out that that wasn't true. But they destroyed those guys' lives. Hopefully those guys, the Duke Lacrosse boys, are recovering. And even in those things, they tried to start a movement. Uh, I heard this morning on a report, uh, a man was saying, we got to get this movement going. We got to, they said, I noticed that a lot of young black people, a lot of young black people getting involved how do we build on this anger? 
you know, how do we get this social justice movement going while they're together now on this anger? <clears throat> and so they're really trying to get something going. And it doesn't matter, really it doesn't matter about uh, Trayvon or George Zimmerman. It doesn't matter who was right or wrong in this situation. And I think that's why they don't want the information about Trayvon to come out. They don't want us to know his history because if we had both sides and we knew that this wasn't some little innocent kid running around tiptoeing through the tulips <laughs> and so, somebody just came along and shot him, then it would sort of give us both sides and we can make the right decision about what to do. And they really don't want this to come out at all. They're attacking conservatives for that and all kind of things. Uh, another thing I noticed that they're doing, they're comparing Trayvon Martin to a guy by the name of Emmett Till. You ever heard of him? No. Emmett, Emmett Till? Yeah, yeah. Nobody here heard of him? I heard of him. Yeah. Oh, the young boy that uh, was killed years ago? Yeah, I believe he were... 40, 50s he, or... He was protesting during the civil rights movement. Oh, yeah, I remember. And he was found dead or something by the classmen. Yes. They're trying to associate that movement with this situation. No, it's not the same. And it had nothing to do with it at all. Nothing at all. I, I was looking at one report, and these people were debating, the experts were debating, and someone said, well, this is not the time for these people to be protesting and marching and acting this, in this way. And then the liberal person said, that's the same thing they showed Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., that this wasn't the time. It's not a time for protest. <laughs> and I'm thinking, wow, it's something else how they are trying to just connect that with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. when it really has no comparison at all. But the issue is that these people who are doing these things are calling themselves Christians. They're saying we're Christians and they have preachers and things marching and rallying with them. And it is confusing to a lot of people because you're supposed to be the Christians. And they don't want anyone to oppose them or have any say so, so they work overtime to shut you down. They protest against you. I hosted a uh, radio show this week. Did you hear that on Wednesday? Yeah. K T L K. Eleven fifty. Eleven fifty. Eleven fifty. Diverse L A. And I opened. It was three hours from nine to uh, twelve p.m. Los Angeles time. You guys did hear? Yeah. You missed it. I didn't know it was on. Oh my God. They just sent out emails about that? Oh, I don't know. If they did, I didn't see it until I got the email. Thursday. You got emails. Yeah, you didn't see it until Thursday, it until Thursday because you were in the wrong place. Obviously. Yeah, you weren't picking on you. <laughs> but uh, it was on for three hours. So what I did was in the first hour, I, in the first 15 minutes, you know, I kind of told who I was and what I'm doing. I talked about rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. And I said that the reason we're doing this and we're doing it without the government is because the whole problem is really the breakdown of the family. It's not about race. And I said that black Americans are suffering, not all but most, not because of racism, but to lack of moral character. The destruction of the family. So we've been working on rebuilding that. And so I, I did my little monologue for the first 15 minutes. And then just before going to break, I gave out the phone number for people to call in. And there were 11 lines on the phone, right, for people to call in on. And every line lit up at the same time. It's like everybody was on a speed dial. And the moment I gave that number, every line lit up, right? And from that point forward, it was all hell. <laughs> for, the next, for the rest of the hours, the three hours, it was just all hell. That's a great opportunity, though. It is. It is. Is it on podcast? Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll find out for you. Is it podcast or not? But it was just all hell for the next three hours. <laughs> and, and I would say, well, tell me something that I'm saying, that I've said, that is not true. And no one can say, well, you said this, it's not true, and here's why it's not true. They, could not, they had no proof. And these are Christians fighting you know, so-called Christian, fighting me. And I said, I'm a Christian too. So how do you discern if Jesse is the Christian, 
Christian, true Christians, or the ones who are against Jesse. Because there are more of them than there are of us. Have you noticed that? Yes. And then they have the support of the media too, more so than we have. And that's what makes it look like they are on the right side because you, you're always seeing so many of them and you rarely can hear from us. And, but they were like, they were, um, they were calling me a you know, liar, you know, Uncle Tom, I mean, just everything. <laughs> I mean, it was just wild. Absolutely wild. Yeah. I said, we talked about the gas prices, and I said that um, in 2008, I was able to fill my SUV up with $30, a little over $30 at best. And now it costs, I just filled up yesterday, and it cost me $85. Wow. <laughs> and some black woman called up from somewhere, you are a liar. It doesn't cost you that much. I'm like, yes, it did. <laughs> I have a sister who lives out there. And I'm like, well, I don't know what it's costing your sister, but it's costing, unless the gas pump is ripping me off. Maybe they're running up the numbers it's not supposed to be. But it was a mess. But it, these are the Christians who are yelling, and then they don't, they don't want me back on that station. They don't. So they want to shut me down. And I wonder again, would the real Christian want to shut you down, right? Because you need the dialogue, you need the back and forth so you can see what is right. It's another way of seeing what is right. But it was a fun time for me. I, I was like, I, I talk about how I used to love ice cream with, uh, you know, peanuts and cookies and everything all mixed in one. And, and strawberry pop. Anybody ever tried that yet? It's good, huh? See, Raymond knows. You, you get the bittersweet taste with it. Nobody wants a bittersweet ice cream. <laughs> I like potato chips and ice cream. It is just, I think your husband like missing food up like that. Chips and ice cream, yes it is. I was telling your husband, uh, my audio engineer, the other day that I had the best dinner one night this week. And what I made was I boiled a hot link, hot dog, and then I put a peanut butter on, peanut butter on a slice of bread. Oh my God. And then I put the link on there and just fold it together. Man. <laughs> yeah, try it, Mary. And I went back in my room, and it was just me and the sandwich and the Lord. I think the Lord came third. <laughs> it was delicious. He came along to help you with that indigestion. And I tried to eat to remember. I forgot about God. <laughs> and I would think about the Lord and say, you have to try it. I would tell your husband about it. And he's like, oh, I love that kind of stuff. I'm like, this is a good man. You, <laughs> the real Christian is the person that put all that junk food together and, and eat it. <laughs> That's the real Christian. But you got to try it. Mary, try it and just let me know what you think. Oh, I will. Cause, yeah. Uh, cause I, well, you said eat almond oh. butter, but I'll put some on there. Yeah, and then you get the hot spicy from the, the meat itself. Yeah. You got everything right there in one. Yeah, because they make, you know, times they have the meat and everything is right. Hot on it. peanut it's butter, the bread, <laughs> the spice, the everything. That's how it is when you put all that stuff in your ice cream bowl <laughs> with ice cream. Um, yeah, ice cream with peanuts, cookies, even peanut butter cookies. And uh, what are those I, things, those M&M things? Oh, I don't like the well, M&M things. I'm not a big fan of m and Like that. Oh. But it's delicious. It gets you really fat, though. <laughs> you get fat, like, real fast when you eat the bowl with the, the ice cream. But anyway, let me move on. Um, <laughs> so I talked about these people looking for a movement. I realized that these people don't want justice. You know, like, I want what is right. Yeah. I, want, I want to be fair for all mankind. You know, that's just, I don't care about the color. I am so not into the color that it may be weird. Because I used to be into the color when I had the anger thing. And, you know, it was between me and white folks. So I thought. I was into the color, but now I'm just into what is the right thing to do? What happened here? You know, what is the situation? Even with my family members. I just want to know what is the right thing. I don't care if it's my daddy, my brother, my sister, whatever. Let's see what the truth is. Even with my staff, 
whenever there's an issue one-on-one, -on -one, you know, they're fight, fighting one another, I bring them to my office, and let's find out what the truth is. And it's hard to find out because no, for the most part, they won't admit who is wrong. They'll just argue at each other and they'll put out all this information. I noticed that angry people put out lies. Have you noticed that? Yes. They won't tell the real truth about the situation. They'll just make up stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed that in your own life? Especially if it looks embarrassing to you. You just make up stuff that's not there and nothing will let you say, well, you know what? Yeah, I'm wrong. I, I should have done this. I have two employees right now that will not work together. And I, I've had them in my office. I'm going to fire them. I'm going to have a meeting next week with them. And I'm going to give them an ultimatum that if they don't work together, they got to go because they're hurting the company. And what they're doing is that they should be interacting with each other because they pretty much are doing the same thing. And so they can uh, exchange information with one another that can help the organization. And I just found out the other day, I just happened to ask a question. They shut down communication with each other. And so the information is not getting out there. And I'm like, how is it that these people can meditate and pray and talk about God and do something like that? And I don't even know what's happening. But they, they always, you know, not always, but they correct other people. I don't know how you call yourself a child of God and just do things like that without conflict. If you work for somebody, you made a promise that you're going to help that company, right? But they'll let their anger get in the way and destroy the company. Is, is, that, is that weird or what? Is that right, Pat? That's right. Yeah, thank you. But if you look at your personal life, you won't admit you're wrong if it's an embarrassing situation. You will not say, oh, yeah, I'm wrong. Or even if the other person is wrong, you won't admit that your overreaction to the other person is wrong. You can always end arguments just like that. Just if it's making you overreact, you say, you know what? I know you're wrong, but I realize the problem is I'm overreacting to it, so I'm the one that's wrong in this situation. And, and, and God would just open up your life in ways you never, ever met. When I did that radio show, I was asked by someone, oh, I noticed that you didn't get mad at those people yelling at you and carrying on, right? And it occurred to me, I'm like, wow, I forgot to get mad. <laughs> it, it, it didn't even occur to me to get mad. It wasn't even a thought. I felt nothing about the yelling the whole the rest of the hours. Because it did not occur to me. Can you imagine living a life and dealing with challenges and it doesn't occur to you to get mad? Wouldn't that be nice? Did you have your hands? I was just going to say, when you were talking earlier, and I was thinking, oh, yeah, I want to be right. I want to do the right thing. When I come here, I, I want to do the right thing. Yes. But when I go home... <laughs> <laughs> it's out the window, huh? Yeah, I tell a little lie. I, you know, I was late because of some little lie. I yes. I made up, you know. And, right. But I come here, and I, I go, <laughs> yes, I want to, you know... That's terrible not to do the right thing. And yeah. Those. Um, let me just say, it's, it's springtime, so my allergies are like working me overtime right now. Uh, it's weird. When I was growing up in Alabama, I never had allergy problems at all. And I grew up around plants and trees and flowers and, and all kind of stuff. Never had it. But when I moved to L.A., it changed right away. That's so wrong with L.A. <laughs> <laughs> And it's not just the liberal, the children of Satan. So why do you think it's harder to do it once you leave the meeting? To do right? I guess it doesn't seem important or something. Or I don't know what it is. It just, I know, I'm, I just don't have any character. I just, you know, unless somebody yells at me or something. Unless someone yells at you? <laughs> That's I, I'm sorry, but I, that's the truth. I, I cry about it all the time. I see myself, you know. You cry about being wrong? Yeah, I, I get, you know, I, mean, I see it all the time. Right. Why do you cry about being wrong? Uh, I just want to change. I don't oh. know what, why. It's like... Why am I this way? And I, and I compare myself to other people. I go, oh, yeah. they're doing so well. They, you know, yeah. 
Wow, I understand what you're doing. What? I'm going to tell you in a minute. Would you, you have the same problem? Yeah, I remember I told you the first Monday, Tuesday, it's easy for me to do whatever we're discussing here. <laughs> <laughs> Rest of the week, I just totally forget about it. The interesting thing is that whenever I do something wrong, um, I realize it right afterwards when I do the wrong. Right. So I, I would say I never realize it before I do something. I just realize it after I did that. <laughs> right. Wow, I have something to tell you about that. Um, let me ask, do you have problems when your husband say you're overreacting? No, but I have a problem when he says calm down. Oh yeah, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> he would tell me about that the other day. Mm -hmm. uh, her husband worked, you know, the audio engineer, and he came in the other morning, he's like shaking his head. <laughs> He said, every time I tell my wife to calm down, she get mad. Why do you think that is? I said, she's crazy. <laughs> nah. Why do you have a problem when he says, calm down? Because he would do that a um, long time ago when we weren't even coming here, when we didn't even have idea what, what the right thing is. Right. When we were just living in a hell, total hell, he would just <laughs> say that. But back then, the problems were totally different. Right. That reminds me of the same situation. I mean, the ton he says that, it brings all the, bad, all the bad stuff that happened on the back, and I don't want to continue with that. Oh. And you haven't, you haven't <laughs> forgiven those things. That's why when he says, calm down, it reminds you of way back when. And, and so what you don't realize is that God has him saying that to you now so you can see yourself overreact. React. So you can forgive. You don't want him to stop saying it. You want to stop reacting to it. Because if he stops saying it, then it'll still be there. And then out there somewhere, somebody else will say it to you, and you'll go nuts. <laughs> the bad thing is that I don't know how to forgive. Oh, OK. I, I, I really don't know. I probably asked this question 10,000 times. Right. Not only you, but 10,000 times to my husband. I just don't know how to You don't know how to forgive. OK. We're going to deal with that. Let me go back to something Susan said. She says that she sees herself, and she starts crying, and she gets upset, or whatever, because she sees how she really is. And she's all right as long as she's sitting in this meeting. But by the time she makes it home, <laughs> it's gone. Isn't that right? And if Susan, and I'm just going to ask one person only. I'm not going to ask everybody this, because I got so much in this I want to bring out about the two Christi, Christianities. Um, let me ask a saved person. <laughs> Don't raise your hand like you're the same one. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm just joking. Um, if, let me ask Frankie. He's pretty smart. If you were walking down the road, you ran into Susan, and she said, you know what? I just left church. I left Jesse Peterson's church. And I had what he was saying. I understand what he said. And I'm almost at the house here, and now I'm feeling, I'm crying about how bad I am. I'm upset. I'm this or that. What will you say to her, uh, Mr. Christian? It's totally normal. <laughs> it's totally normal. Everybody goes through that, and that is the test. This is the time. Of course, this is when you're in church, you've got it. You think you've got it. You probably you don't really have it. It's when, you, when you're in the situation. A little louder for me. When you're in the situation, this is the time for you to be still. So what you practice, to what you practice, this is the time to to, to act on it. So when she see how angry and wicked and awful she is, mm -hmm. you would say it's time to be still and practice. This this is the time. This is truly who you are. Yeah. And you're laughing at that answer because. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to go off on him. She's going to go off on him? <laughs> that doesn't help. One thing I realized about, realize that God has caused me to realize, when you, are, when you are conscious of him, when you become aware, um, and you enter into this place within, you start to become perfect. You start to become perfect. But what's happening is, you're seeing your own nature. And 
and Satan is convincing you that it's still who you are. And so you identify with that's who you are because you have a concept that once you enter into the kingdom of heaven, then these things that you used to do or maybe still somewhat there in your mind should not be a part of what you think at all, what you do. And so he is deceiving you by presenting these things to you and causing you to believe that that's who you are. You don't realize that things are changing. But if you could do what he said, just watch what Satan is telling you, you will start to be overcoming that. You will start to overcome that even more so. And everything that you overcome, you're just being made perfect. You don't realize that Satan is still reminding you that you are a bitter, old, angry person. You still believe the lie. But you are changing. You just won't let that change manifest to a point where you, you'll become more acquainted with that because you're so acquainted with what Satan tells you about yourself. And that's what you identify with. That makes sense? Yeah. Because once you enter into the kingdom, Satan is not going to go, oh, okay, I'm not going to remind this person of anything else that they have done. He's still going to remind you, but if you can be still and watch it, you're being made better. But the moment you identify with it, you go back into that hell of your imagination, and that's where the problem is. You start judging yourself and all that. That makes sense? Yeah. So you believe it. You believe it. So You're not believing God. You're believing what Satan is telling you. Yeah. And he's using, he's using what you were before you awakened, before you came into the mind of God. He's, he's using what you've been through against you. And you're still believing the wrong voice. Mm-hmm. It's not who you are anymore. <laughs> yeah. That seems so easy and simple to me. But, yes. But as an average person in the world right now, isn't she way ahead of the game? Yeah, but she doesn't even realize that yeah, either. You're way ahead. I mean, the fact, go ahead. I was going to just say, you know, I have sisters and family that go to church all the time and trust and believe in God, even write books about it. Yeah. Um, but if you have a discussion with them and they, they disagree with you, she goes, well, this is just the way I am. Uh-huh. And they confess with, that's right. with their mouth that, yeah, I'm a B. Yeah. And yeah, that's I had to tell her off. And, and it's like, wow, if you're so blind... I don't know if they're going to ever come Amen. out of that. It's just, but if you're conscious and you're trying to see yourself, you're ahead of the game. You're way ahead because you know that that's something wrong. Yeah. They don't. This other aspect of Christianity, they don't know. Mm-hmm. That's just the way I am. Mm-hmm. Who are you to judge? Right. Blah, blah, blah. You know? <laughs> but see, but if you could just learn not to believe a lie anymore, you'd be fine. And then you'd be made perfect. Every situation you get into, you'll be conscious enough to not to overreact. I'm telling you, it'll blow your mind. And then you'll be able to say, oh, I forgot, I, I didn't think to get mad at those folks for treating me that way. And, and it just oh. changes. You find yourself just looking at life, looking at situation, and, she and you're not feeling judging anything. Herself. Is she, you're judging yourself? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's getting mad at the lie that Satan is telling her about herself, yeah. uh, or, or the old person that she used to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and every time you believe that lie, then that's what you believe into. It believes into you and it controls you. Okay. All right? You just believe in a lie. But you're not, as long as you believe that lie, you're not going to be made perfect. When you stop believing it, then you will. Man and her husband. It's about overcoming. Yes? So it's just like a test, huh? I mean, like <laughs> a test in the sense that mm, um, you already went past some things and then they come back and visit. Because, like, for instance, this morning I was up there and I, and I was do, doing some with, something with the water. So I knew I turned the water off, right? So yeah. I'm outside. So, so yeah. something says, oh, you need to check and see if the water. I just, like, I know I turned the water. So I didn't go. And right. I did it a couple of different things, but I already knew. So I didn't have to go do that exactly. particular thing. You definitely one. need to practice, not going <laughs> practice, back. Practice, practice. Now you okay. can keep the mailbox over there. Yeah. Because it's, uh, when I would walk away from the mailbox, I said, oh, you didn't lock the mailbox. I knew I locked the box. And then I go back to the box, it's locked, and I would have to still kick it. I got my footprint all over the mailbox. It had to be low enough where I could. <laughs> but when you practice not going back, yeah, it's going to blow your mind. Right, so I because you're not giving room to Satan to deceive you. Yeah, That's so practicing faith. Moment. Yes. It's practicing faith. It sure is. Instead of believing in doubt and lies. Satan is all doubt. He is a deceiver. Yeah. Oh, 
Yes. I had one more thing. Um, last week I went to this, well, supposedly Christian women's conference, like called Hurting to Health or something. But Hurting anyway, to Health? Hurt, hurt, hurting well, anyway, H2H. The details are not there anymore. But the point is that the ladies, all these kind of Christian, you know, those pseudo Christian people, and um, they, they're just so funny because they just talk about things that are so, I mean, they talk about things like there's nothing you can do about it. Yes, no faith. <laughs> right, is what they say. And it's, like, it's, it, it's almost like, it's, I don't really like to go to them because they're very <laughs> negative. You're doing yeah, it kind of pulls you <laughs> down, down, and you're like, well, why did I come here? Be careful who you fellowship. Yeah. Maybe you're there to pull them up. No, be careful how you fellowship. No, there's too many people there. Yeah. Like, for instance, there's one lady, she's a preacher. Let me, let me do this she because goes on and on. Be careful who you fellowship. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, you got a you got you, Go ahead. Um, when she said anyway, she doesn't understand that she became better. I just have a quick question. Uh, I know you don't do things. You became better, but you still do things. Does it make you any better? You Very good perfect. question. See, what you don't realize, uh, what you may not realize is that you are becoming better. The fact that you can see, the fact that you can see that you're wrong, right? You are becoming better, but there's nothing that you can feel, taste, or touch, right? And so again, let's say you mess up, right? Let's say you mess up and Satan used that against you and say, oh, I thought you were getting better or you thought you were better. Look, you're doing the same thing over. If you don't listen to that lie either, because the good thing about God, once you enter into consciousness of one mind of God, you may repeat something, but if you don't judge that physical act that you're carrying out, it, aware, it, it, it fades away after a while and you're still becoming better. That's not a sign that you're not becoming better. But it's a sign that, as uh, Frankie was saying, you, you're still doubting it by believing the lie. His, Satan's voice is a lie. I got a letter from uh, uh, the manager of the building that we leased from, right? And Irma said, oh, I left a letter on your desk from the manager, my chair from the manager. And right away, and I paid attention to it, to see if Satan would tell me about what was in that letter. And so right away, Satan said, oh, he's going to try to raise your rent. <laughs> he's going to do this or that, right? And I'm looking at all the things that Satan is telling me about what's in the letter. Yeah, I am way down the road driving to the office, and he's telling me what's in the letter. And I paid close attention to what he was telling me. And when I got to my office, it wasn't a letter from the manager at all. It was something I had sent to him that should not have gone to him. And they just sent it back to us. It had nothing to do with him. But I'm thinking, wow, that's something else how Satan tried to tell me what was in that letter. And if I didn't know Satan's voice, I could have been freaking out on the way to the office, had a headache, stomach ate for no reason. Mm -hmm. All you had to do was pay attention. Yes? That's, you know, that's true. I, <clears throat> I see that yeah. all the time. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, I can't speak. But I see that all the time yep. that I do that. You just, you see, like, like the young lady was saying, you are further ahead than what you think because you know that, but you just won't relax and, and just know that this voice is not the true voice. My children shall know me by my voice. And God's voice is a voiceless voice. It's not going to be telling you all this stuff that you be hearing. Understand that. It's not going to say, well, by the time you get home, your house is going to be burned down. <laughs> or... Whatever it says. His voice is not here. It's in the soul of your belly. It's a quiet, voiceless voice. That's the difference between Satan and God's voice. All right, I see so many hands. I just don't know what to do. You're going to go on. Yeah, I need to go on. Can you hold your thoughts just for a minute? Let me lay this out a little bit more. And I'm showing you the two different Christians, those who discern because they have the mind of Christ, and those who uh, uh, just gather knowledge from the world, and they, and they call themselves Christian too. And concerning this Trayvon Martin's A and Joyce Zimmerman, I saw women on TV saying, the reporter would ask these black women, why are you here today? Why are you involved in this situation? Well, because 
I know that there is an attack upon black men. And I have a son. I have a son who's, you know, some kids are little and they become adults one day. And I don't want this uh, attack to happen to my son. I don't want my black son to have to go through this. And I'm thinking to myself, what attack are they talking about? <laughs> it doesn't exist. And they talk about the, black, the white and black situation. And they're implying that America is still back in the 60s and 50s and 40s, and that white folks are still attacking and killing the black male. That's what they're talking about. And I'm thinking, how do you get these people to believe this kind of stuff that doesn't exist? <coughs> America has changed in America. There is no, nothing else that white folk can do. White Americans are not out there. I don't even think the Klansmen are bothering us anymore because they don't have to. We're, we're killing ourselves. We're killing ourselves. And so they are like totally believing something that's not even true. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I know, like you said, like when they voted Obama in, you said the black folks not going to be satisfied. That's and right. Just, and just the other day on the radio, Al Sharpton said, you could put a black man in the White House, but a young boy can't walk his own house or something. Isn't that something? <laughs> All that is part of that brainwashing. They're using the past, which doesn't exist anymore, to brainwash the angry Christians and have them saying the same thing because they really can't see that what it, what they're complaining about doesn't exist anymore. It's like being uh, in a relationship and you, you cause your husband or your wife to become angry and then you're sorry for it and you apologize and you change for it. You don't do it anymore, right? But if the wife or the husband is still angry, they're not gonna see that you've changed, especially if you do anything that's kind of look like or say something that look like the same thing. Because they're still mad at you, they still think, they would think that you have not changed. Have you noticed that? That's what's going on with this. Most black Americans are still angry. They're angry at not having good parents. They're angry because they've been brainwashed to believe that white folks are still after them. And so when Sharpton and Jackson and others get up and they give a civil rights sermon, it's easy to believe it, even though it's not real. Real fast, I'll do this so I can take you guys. It, it, it's not happening. Oh, it's stupid. It's dumb and crazy, but it's blind. I understand it. How are you going to stand in front of a camera and say, I'm out here because I have a black son and I don't want this to happen to my son? While at the same time, black on black crime is out of control. If anything, I'd be afraid that my son is going to get killed by another black person, not some racist white person. But they don't see that. You ask them, well, why aren't you involved in, in, in the black on black crime? Oh, I don't even know what they say about it. They don't ask. The media doesn't ask. That. Yeah, they don't even have it. It's, it's not even asked. See, you see the, the different, now, but children of God who can discern because they have the mind of Christ, they see how crazy this is. And abortion, for example, is out of control in the black community. Uh, Planned Parenthood, according to blackgenocide.com, 70% of Planned Parenthood abortion meals in the black community. Every day, 1,500 black babies are aborted. True racism, true intent to destroy uh, the black family, the black kids, right? And it's happening every day. Nobody shows up. We had a rally last week. Was it last week? Uh, uh, the Catholic Church and Christians got together and did a rally to prevent the government from forcing the church to pass out contraception and things like that, right? And these rallies happen in different states and cities around the country at the same time. So we went downtown LA for the rally. Maybe there were three blacks there. Oh, wow. And, and I think the three was Billy, <laughs> <laughs> my guy, uh, a cam uh, another black man who happened to be there, I didn't know him, and me. Really? That was it. And black children are being killed every day 1,500 of them, every day. And we can't get them to show up for that at all. And you know why? Because the race aspect is not being talked about, so it doesn't motivate the anger in black people and get them geared up to come out to get the bad old white man. That's what, and the media did not show up at all for us. 
no media coverage at all. Now, we had all these people to come together around the country at the same time, holding a rally to stop this mandate, and the media did not show up. The media has decided, liberal media, that it's not going to present the views of the true Christians. It is interesting, too, because it knows how to present the views of the false Christians, those are names that only. They show up for them. Everybody and their mama know about these rallies. But the cruise Christians, they don't show up. The media did not show up for them. Isn't that amazing? Um, yeah, I think that's it. I, I just wanted to present the, the true Christians versus those who say that they're Christians and can't see what's going on. And for those who do see what's going on, you just got to start speaking up in your environment, telling the truth. And don't be afraid. And it'll spread. God will make a way for you. He really, really will. Even though uh, Satan is, is, is uh, in control of this world, and there are more of his children uh, than there seem to be of God's children, God is still in control. And for those that love him and are willing to take a stand, he'll be there with you. Don't worry about it. And don't let your eyes judge the big situation and make you feel helpless or hopeless to the situation. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. I'm telling you. Don't worry. It looked like we were losing the battle. Does it look like we're losing? Because the media show all this other stuff, and here you are fighting, always fighting an uphill battle. But we're winning. We are winning. Slowly but surely. They really, really, really are. All right, let me take some questions. Go ahead. That was a nice speech, and I think it was the same one that George Washington may have given his troops uh, years before they actually won. It's don't worry, we're winning, That's even right. though they were getting their butts kicked yep. for many years. So that helps. Um, but you know, my niece questioned, um, a, the, she, she's black, she was talking to another, um, well, half black, she was talking to another um, uh, black woman, and she said, how come you're not about black on black crime? And she said, because it's us doing it to each other. That's not racism. In other words, See, that's part in other of the, words, the greatest sin that can be done by any person is racism. Yeah, that's part you of can the kill, so You can murder somebody, but as long as you're not doing it with racist intent, that's okay. Another dumb thing that I see that they're doing, and you're right about that, but that's just part of the blindness. When I was an angry man, I had the same thought. Well, at least a white man is not doing it. <laughs> so it's not racism. Isn't that amazing? And you are afraid to walk out of your door. <laughs> and it's not because the white man is next door, but because of the black man. Uh, another thing that they're doing that is real dumb, they're saying things like, I am Trayvon. This guy can turn out to be a hootlum. And they're going around saying, I am Trayvon. Identify with the exterior instead of what is within. And it seemed all right. You know, just these are Christians. Ain't no way. I'm not even Malcolm X nor Martin Luther King. And I respect both of those guys. I am Jesse Peterson. That's it. Uh, dealing with a spiritual battle. God doesn't want us to identify with out, outside things. He wants us to identify with him. That's the problem now. Satan got us identified with everything but, but what is within us. Do not walk around here calling yourself Trayvon. You may end up, I don't know where Trayvon went, but let's say he didn't go to the right place. You're going to be right there with Trayvon. And, and, and you're going to go to the pearly white gate, and the angel is going to come down and, and answer the gate bell, and you're going to have on your hood and T-shirt talking about, I'm Trayvon. They're going to be like, oh, he went the other way. <laughs> But I'm just saying that to say, identify with the spirit of God within. All these things that are happening outside are just things that are happening. That's not who you are. All right? Stand for righteousness sake. Stand for what is right. All right. Yes, ma'am. Well, I just wanted to say something about thoughts when they're talking about yes. it, that they are so strong. I had a little misunderstanding with my daughter, and it right away took me to, you are nowhere. Yes. You haven't gotten anywhere. Yeah. You know, it's all been a lie. So uh, it tried to make me uh, depressed, and and uh, and I keep looking at it. I keep looking at it. For a while, to... I felt a lot of guilt, 
but then when I let it go, um, it tries to come back, but I just look at it and it fades. It gets like less and less. It, things, boys, will eventually fade away. It won't have the same influence that it had prior to you becoming aware of it. Right. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. it really, really will. And most people are controlled by the voice of Satan, which is connected to anger and unforgiveness. I heard a, a man by the name of T.D. J. say this morning, <laughs> he was being interviewed about forgiveness. And he said, well, some people think that you're not supposed to have anger. You are supposed to forgive so you can let it go, right? But he said, you're still supposed to have anger because God, uh, Christ was angry and whatever he said, but he said, a, a little anger won't hurt. And I'm like, what's well, such a lie? That's a lie. Any anger is bad anger because that's not righteous anger. It's not of God. It will only hurt you and everybody around you. But because he has a, he's out there, the media has a big name, a lot of folks will fall for that, and they'll beat you down if you tell them to let go of anger. Not understanding that, that anger is not good. These people who are, call, are calling themselves, I am Trayvon, <laughs> and wearing the hoodie thing, they are angry people and cannot see. That's, and then they got Satan's uh, big dolls up there, Jackson and Sharpton and all these so-called people, telling them, just feeding that anger. It, it's, when you wake up, you're going to see how dumb it is to let somebody use the so-called civil rights movement to control you. That's not, it's not even needed anymore. It's really not needed. It's time for you to start living and thinking for yourself. Living as individuals, judging people based on character and principle. White folks are going through the same thing that everybody else is going through. They're worried about their children, their finance, and you don't mess with white people's money. <laughs> They're worried about how I'm going to hold on to the money because they like to go to fancy hotels and take vacations. While y'all, I am Trayvon trying to take the white man's money. But it's the same spirit. If you are on this earth, you're dealing with the spirit of Satan or God. It had nothing to do with no civil rights movement. You are not Trayvon, and you look stupid wearing a hoodie. It's terrible. I can't even wear my hoodie anymore. Because <laughs> I don't want them to... Else. Yeah, I had, I, I had to wear a jacket with no hood now. <laughs> and this little hoodie was gray, and I just throw it on, wear it with jeans or sweatpants or anything. Now I, I'm going to have to be looking like I'm Trayvon, too, <laughs> with my hoodie. <laughs> so now I can't wear it. Yes, Ray? Oh, oh. When I was talking about uh, these voices, uh, the voices came to, uh, to Jesus and tempted him for 40 days. Yeah. And the purpose uh, for that is, is to endure the temptation. And that's the, what our purpose when we hear those voices is to endure. Absolutely. And in the end, uh, you, you know, you'll persevere and those voices will be quiet and, and that's where salvation, salvation lies. If you can learn to just not came into the voices that come to your head, which is temptation from Satan, I'm telling you, life is starting. You're just starting to flower like a, you're just starting to come up like a flower. I'm not saying. It'll just change. It really will. But if you don't recognize God's voice, you're going to be in this hellhole forever. And it's so unnecessary because we've been bought back by Christ. We're already owned by him. He want us. He gave his life for us. And if you don't recognize, if you don't discern what's going on, you're suffering unnecessarily. You got to recognize the voice. My children shall know me by my voice, says God. And his voice is annoying. It's a voiceless voice. And you will become more familiar with that as you draw away from the voice in your head. Yes? I don't know if we have time for this, um, but I've noticed that the voice only comes to me with, and, and the only reason why oh. I agree with the voice is because I have judged already. I was driving down the road. Make a long story short. Somebody cut me off, and normally that doesn't get me upset, but this time it did because I was in a hurry. So I got upset, and then the, and then the voice came. I judged, 
the person cut me off, you know, I could feel a feeling. Before the voice came, and then the voice came to try to pile on. So I, 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 um, I questioned, well, what comes first, the cart or the horse? Do you judge first, and then thoughts come upon you, and then you believe the thoughts because you've already judged? Well, the That's thought what is the, with me. The thought is the temptation, and once you judge what it's telling you, then that's when you lose. One point I want to make, I was talking to somebody this week, and what I realized, even about these people who are protesting about this trade bar margin thing, if you don't start paying attention to the little things in your life, these little personal things that you do in life and decisions you make, and when nothing's really big going on, you're not ready when the big thing comes. You'll be easily pulled in then. If you could be aware of your regular daily life, dealing with work and dealing with families and dealing with little situations in life, be aware of yourself just driving down the road before you even get to the person that drives in front of you and cuts you off. If you could be aware of why you're doing that, it builds you up. It makes you more conscious of the things to come. And then once you're hit by the big things, you don't overreact to them. But so many people are making bad decisions in their little, you know, in their private lives every day, every minute. And they don't, they don't seem to think that that should come first. The way you live is where God is with, you know, God is with you. So if you can pay attention about those little things, that's where the growth began. I was talking to a man this week. He would tell me about how he had realized he had just wasted a lot of money unnecessary, unnecessarily. And he said, oh, I didn't really pay attention to what I was doing. I, I just thought that that was right. And it just instantly made me realize, you got to, I pay attention to every dime I spend. I'm not like afraid or fearful, but I, I pay attention to what I think about it, you know, how I'm feeling. Is it, you know, I'm just looking at it. And so when big things come, and that's what's wrong with these folks here that's uh, marching with this Trayvon thing, right? They are not paying attention to the, the little things, that, what seem like little things in life. So the devil comes along with a major thing, they're on board right away because they are, they are not strong enough to stand back for a moment and observe the situation so you can see the right thing to do. But pay attention to those little things that are happening. Well, I knew I was already upset because I was in a hurry. Yeah. I didn't want to be late again like I normally am. Right. And so I kind of sensed I would be set up for anything like that. But, when that, but like I said, I judged before the thought came. Yeah. I could just feel the reaction. And then, and then I get flooded with all these negative thoughts. You know, to, to kind of weigh in on it. That I could hear the thoughts calling him a name. And, or, yeah, but don't weigh in. Just observe. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's uh, paradise is uh, uh, lost and found in mind and with us. It's already here. It's already at hand. But when you get away from the thoughts, and don't force yourself to do it, but get, I love to get away from the temptations of Satan. He's telling you all this stuff. It's crazy to think that the civil rights movement is still going on. It's crazy to think that white people are still after you because of your color. It's not even happening, but if you have anger, the Satan's children who are, who are stronger than you can influence you of that, and then Satan just ride with you on it and make you believe that it's right. You don't even have to worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear. If you get into that, you create a problem. Just get up and do the right thing. Go to work, save your money, be wise. You'll be fine. And don't look at the big media at bringing out all of Satan's children. Or Satan will tell you, look how we're losing. Uh, you might as well get your rock and hide behind it. It's over. That's Satan telling you that. That's not God telling you that. We're going to win this battle. Slowly but surely. And when we win, it's won. It's over. All right, the fat lady did her thing <laughs> when we went. Did this help a little bit? It did. Yes. Just be aware of little things that you like. Raymond, did you have a, I didn't get back to you. Did you have a question? I'm sorry. Just one quick uh, quick comment. I understand, uh, earlier this morning, I heard, as to uh, regard to what Susan said, how, uh, how she uh, feels like she fa fail, uh, failed when she leaves the ch uh, church, I know how she feels because when I pray, uh, pray it seems like uh, it seems like and it, um, something in me was trying to remind me of all the terrible things. That's I, Satan. Yes. Remind you of all the things. I'm sorry to cut you off. We have 30 seconds. Let me just say, folks, get over the anger. Don't let anyone make you believe, 
cause you to believe that anger is good. It's never good. It's of, of the devil. And some people may mean well by that, but it's not true. But most importantly, keep an eye on yourself. All right? And when you pray, shut up, be quiet, and let God guide you. Thank you for tuning in. And speak up. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. For more information, to purchase a copy of this program, or to make a donation, visit us on the web at bondinfo.org or call 1-800-411-2663. That's 1-800-411-BOND. Thank you.